Joining me right now to talk more about capital markets is the president of the New York Stock Exchange, Lynn Martin, is here from Davos. Also joined the conversation all morning long, Dagan McDowell, Monica Crowley, and James Freeman. Lynn, great to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Let me get your take on the volatility that we've seen uh, in markets. What has that meant for your business, and what do you think is behind it? Well, thanks for having me today. I'm thrilled to be here with you guys. We miss you in Davos, though. Um, so at the end of the day, this is what you're seeing in the markets right now really represents the uncertainty that's weighing on consumers' minds. Uh, you know, worries about inflation, higher gas prices, higher food prices, uh, worries about U.S. economic policy in terms of interest rate raises. It's causing some pressure on the market or just uncertainty on the market. But, you know, you have a day like yesterday and it, and it rebounds. At the end of the day, wh what is happening is buyers are meeting sellers and sellers are meeting buyers and are doing it in a really efficient fashion. And yep. our job at the New York Stock Exchange is to ensure that particularly in times of volatility, that our markets stay open, transparent, have tremendous amounts of liquidity, and that our systems remain robust and can handle the demand in messaging that we're seeing across our platforms. Yeah, Lynn, I want to get your take on this slowdown in IPOs and, and, and find out what you've got in the, uh, uh, in the pipeline. But before I get to that, we're told that the Securities and Exchange Commissioner, uh, the Commission, Gary Gensler, Chairman, is hard at work on equity market structure. And I want to get your thoughts on what kind of proposals we may see and what that means for the New York Stock Exchange in, in terms of a changing regulatory backdrop. Yeah, you know, we've been really um, in dialogue with Chair Gensler and his team. We really appreciate his collaborative dialogue associated with a pretty complex issue that he's trying to solve at the moment. At the end of the day, what we're really hopeful that comes out of this is a unification of rule set across the dark pools and the lit exchanges, because at the end of the day, the lit exchanges are where the price discovery for our markets happen. They're highly regulated, highly secure, highly robust, but they have a different rule set as compared to the dark pools. I can't forecast what Chair Gensler is ultimately going to do, but I do know that his team, as you noted, is very actively at work and putting a lot of thought behind what may come out of the administration on this topic. Well, I mean, there's a lot of conversation about new models being vetted. A FTX, a crypto exchange comes to mind. Are we seeing different models because of what has taken place in the crypto space? I think what we have to come back to is our transparent infrastructure that has worked time and time again across the SEC governed markets, across the CFTC governed markets, and across international markets as well. Central cleared markets have withstood multiple financial crises and have really led to the price discovery that needs to happen in volatile and uncertain times. And it's done so beautifully. It has navigated through multiple financial crises, yeah. and we have come out on every single one of those bouts of volatility or financial crises stronger and more secure as a global economy. So I think you have to come back to the way our markets have been refined time and time again mm. from a risk management standpoint. Well, we're lucky to have the deepest and most liquid markets in the world for sure. But what is behind Absolutely. this lack of IPOs and, uh, and deals? What are you expecting? What does the pipeline look like for later in the year, Lynn? You know, the end of the day, the pipeline is incredibly strong. There is no shortage of demand for companies to come to the public markets, which is great news. They see the benefits of being a public exchange, the access to the deep liquid pools of capital right, that allow haven't. them to we're, invest we're in, in a their period businesses. Where they haven't, right? They haven't yet. Yeah. You're absolutely right. What they're waiting for at the moment, though, is the right timing. Hmm. Volatility is going to slow down companies coming to market. And that's something we've seen in the past, too. 2019, we awoke to a government shutdown. 2020, we had to deal with the pandemic. 
And both of those years, the IPO markets recovered incredibly strong. We are working with a tremendous amount of pipeline of companies that are looking just for the right time to come to market. Yeah, it, ma it makes sense. Nobody wants to go public when the market's down 30% on the NASDAQ, James. And it's always an issue for companies, the costs of being a public company, uh, the, the regulatory costs, compliance. Uh, a lot of people prefer the freedom of operating in the private markets uh, if they don't need the capital, if they don't need to go public. Um, is that, is that going to be more of an issue now when we see a more active SEC? I mean, I don't, I don't know if you're a private firm and you're thinking about going public, if you like seeing that there's going to be a whole new raft of climate disclosure requirements. So on the climate disclosure side, you know, we're in active dialogue with our issuer community to digest the rulemaking that has come out. At the end of the day, we prom we promote transparency and we're very supportive of transparency. We just need to do it in a very thoughtful fashion, particularly around environmental, social and governance risks. I mean, it really is what led us on the ice side of the business to bring to market a variety of tools that are focused on adding transparency on environmental, social and governance risks, which is something that we provide to our issuers. I guess I don't understand with this whole movement, companies already have to report, if they're public companies, they already have to report risks to their business, material events. Uh, why do you need a whole nother climate structure? If there's a number, I mean, if there's a, a risk that they can put a number on, they already have to disclose that without adding more climate specific rules, don't they? Well, the good news is really you're seeing the phenomenon of investors voting with their dollars here. So you do see more and more companies, large caps definitely moving into the media cap and even some of the small caps starting to disclose their environmental, social and governance risks, because at the end of the day, that is where the money is being driven. Um, there is investment dollars coming into those firms who have sustainable practices. Yeah, but that, isn't that often politically driven as opposed to returns driven? Uh, you know, if during 2020, you actually saw a phenomenon where those companies who had really good environmental practices, social practices, and governance practices outperformed. Um, that's really the first time that you saw the alpha generation uh, from ESG. And that's what has led companies increasingly to disclose these risks. I mean, if I look at, at our own companies, our issuers, uh, more and more, about 100%, actually disclose the scope one and scope two emissions already on the large cap side and that you know moves down the spectrum as firms build out their infrastructure but there is a desire for firms to increasingly disclose that because they have a good story to tell mm -hmm. lynn before you go real quick are you going to boot those chinese stocks off the exchange if they don't follow your accounting rules you know, that's a that's an interesting issue. It's something that, you know, we're waiting for guidance from the SEC at the end of the day. It really is focused on transparency and you have to balance investor protection uh, and transparency associated, you know, with with uh, access to companies. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, we got to be transparent, right? We, we want to know who's subsidizing Absolutely. these companies if they're not following U.S. accounting rules. But I know that there's a window coming up for the federal thrift fund to buy these Chinese stocks in June. I'm wondering if you've heard any guidance from the SEC in terms of pulling back or pushing forward on booting those companies off the exchanges so that investors don't get hoodwinked into buying them and then losing money. No, we've not heard any specific guidance on that particular matter. We're following the Holden, Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act and the timeframes that are, are defined there. And at the end of the day, I really hope that we don't lose sight of the okay. fact that the U.S. markets are the greatest markets in the world. Yeah, they for sure. They offer access to global pools of capital. Yeah, they, that's where uh, they want they that access. They allow global companies. Yeah. They allow companies to raise uh, capital Global companies yeah. to raise meaningful forms of capital. Yeah, even uh, though even though CCP to type that. companies, you're right. Lynn, it's great to see you. You're handling we, taking a lot of different subjects today. We appreciate it. We'll see you back in New York. <laughs> Be safe. Thanks very much for being here.